Hello indie game fans! Dead Cells Without a Doubt is a masterpiece due to the compelling gameplay loop, the awesome feeling combat, and the constant free content patches, but if you're just a little bit tired with that game, here are 10 games that managed to capture a little bit of that same magic, starting with Fury Unleashed. A descriptor that I have seen in games like this is Dead Cells but with guns, but interestingly, melee weapons play a part here as well. Set in the pages of an ever-changing comic book, prove your creator wrong by destroying the monsters created, slaughtering ancient gods, Nazis and alien scum. I do like the visuals and the hectic action with the standard procedural generation and permadeath. There is meta progression as collected ink can be used for permanent upgrades, but its most interesting aspect is the gameplay affecting combo system. Chaining together attacks and kills doesn't just contribute to some abstract score, but rather can grant you bonuses like invincibility against a number of enemy hits, which then keeps the action going as you run and gun your way through the game. It is currently in early access with pretty frequent updates, so definitely one to check out. Dungreed is a roguelite action platformer from a Korean indie developer that I got very excited about when I first came to know of it, since it checks all the same boxes that really appeal to me. A mysterious dungeon appeared and sucked all the townspeople into it, and you play as an adventurer sent to solve this mystery. Two things stand out to me in this title, the first being town building, since destroyed buildings can be reconstructed and upgraded, and the missing townspeople can be rescued to become NPCs in town. This then allows for meta progression as you improve your stats, but there is also Binding of Isaac style item unlocks for future runs as well. Additionally, instead of purely melee weapons, for some reason guns are a thing in this world as well, so wield sniper rifles and more. This really nails that look light gameplay loop and is sure to keep you playing for just one more run. A lesser known title is Aura of Worlds a self-described creative roguelite platformer where you have different options at your disposal. The example on the store page is that if there's a chest on the other side of a pit of lava, you could use the grappling hook to get across, freeze time and bounce off enemies, use a boomerang to fetch the item, or to blow up the lava pit with a grenade, so plenty of choice which makes this interesting. There are three primary worlds with nine randomized level themes with multiple users for each item as well. Permanent progression in the form of unlocking shortcuts, new items and character backgrounds keeps you playing, though perhaps what I could say count against this is the visual design. While Dead Cells self describes as a rogue vania, a robot named Fight is a metric vania rogue knight, where if it isn't obvious enough, our main character looks and moves just like Samus.
procedurally generated metroidvanias are an interesting subgenre to study, since metroidvanias by design are meticulously crafted interconnected worlds, so to have it randomized and jumbled up is quite the interesting design problem to solve. While not as fluid as Dead Cells, this is the most Metroid-like of the Metroidvania titles in the long while, with the level layouts and structure of the game being pretty good. Small tip though, this game has been heavily discounted of up to 90% off, so if you have not gotten it yet, perhaps look out for one of these. Collapsed is the title from last year, which is, as mentioned at the top of the video, Dead Cells with Guns. Run and gun your way through procedurally generated levels, killing enemies and fighting bosses with a sci-fi theme. You do carry over items and skills from run to run, which can make you quite powerful, but neat art style with a focus on shooting, which is a change of pace. However, I found this to be a little bit odd narratively, simply throwing you straight into the midst of things, but the core systems are worth exploring. If Dead Cells is a roguelite with Metroidvania elements, Sundered is a Metroidvania with roguelite elements, providing a nice duality on the other side of the coin. This infernal place has taken me hostage. I keep coming close to death, but this world is keeping me alive. The beautiful hand-drawn art style is a trademark of developer Thunder Lotus Games, where one of the main highlights has to be the gigantic boss battles. Endless hordes surround me. They hunger for my humanity. Will I resist or embrace? The structure of this is quite interesting, since certain hub areas are fixed even when you die, but the areas in between are procedurally generated, and the extensive upgrade skill tree and multiple character builds also allow for replayability as well. One of the more unforgiving and overlooked look light platformers is Vagante, perhaps due to the very dim lighting and a kind of generic fantasy world. Explore an adventure through the lands and search for fame, riches and power. However, this has been compared to Spelunky in terms of how tightly it is designed, and there appears to be quite the extensive number of options and systems in this, with 5 character classes, enchanted items and equipment, and even the ability to cook fish that you catch. Don't hear this mentioned enough, so giving it a shout out. A recent release in the genre is Kellypot, where you play as a white tiger knight searching for his brother who has turned on him, where the characters are literally named Cain and Abel, so no point for creativity. However, the hand-drawn art in this is absolutely stunning, especially in the backgrounds and environments since there are elements of parallel dimensions and realities in this. While it is structured like Dead Cells, with the procedurally generated levels, action, platforming, and meta progression, this plays in controls like Hollow Knight, in my opinion, so again, another interesting melding of ideas. The 
the bullet hell elements in the boss fights are also very impressive, with a cast of furry friends as well. The updates and content patches seem to be coming, with a roadmap planned for completion at summer 2020, so keep an eye on this. Rogue Legacy, as many of you know, holds a very special place in my heart since this is the title that brought me into indie games in the first place, a roguelite platformer where you play as successive generations of a family delving into an ever-changing castle. The hook is that each child has some unique trait about them, from non-gameplay affecting oddities like IBS, which causes your character to fart constantly, to ones which do affect gameplay, such as gigantism, increasing your character's hitbox but decreasing the knockback received. The family manor can be upgraded in between runs, unlocking more classes, better merchants, and so on, so a title which absolutely nails that roguelite formula. However, in many ways, Dead Cells has refined this, but I think that it still has its charm and is worth a play if you have not tried. Playing as the space captain Flint Hulk, traverse through the galaxy and land on other ships as you seek to claim the bounty on the heads of the various bosses. A game which started off with the idea of Spider-Man with a gun, the grappling hook mechanic takes a while to get used to, but when it clicks, this can be so satisfying to pull off. The time-slowing chrono belt is also essential in avoiding projectiles, and this even has a couple of progression systems stacked on top of each other, which enhances that very compelling gameplay loop. Awesome visuals and with its fair share of secrets, this is one of my favourite roguelike titles, taking the number one spot. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe, check out the recommended playlist or the best pick for you, and I will see you after the jump.